Let me tell you about a movie experience called Grand Theft Auto. Ron had done a movie, starred in a movie for Roger Corman called Eat My Dust. The movie was hugely successful. After uh, Roger came to him and said, Ron, how about we do another movie? Ron said to Roger Corman, I'd be happy to do another movie for you, but he said, I want to add one other job, which I will do for nothing. And Roger said, what is that? And Ron said, I want to direct. And Roger looked at him and kind of grinned and said, you always look like a director to me. He and I had written a script called Tis the Season. And Roger read it and uh, called up Ron and said, Ron, uh, this is one of the best scripts that's come across my desk in five years. But it's not the kind of thing I do. If you and your dad can write a script called Grand Theft Auto about young people on the run, we got a deal. So Ron came to me and said, uh, Dad, can we write a script called Grand Theft Auto, by, uh, Auto about young people on the run? And I said, well, sure, we can do that. I realized that Ron had great potential as a director for the first time when he was directing a little student film that I was in. And uh, it, was a, it was a little film called Old Paint. And he uh, gave me a piece of direction. And I suddenly realized, oh, this is somebody you pay attention to. I do remember Ron having the dream and the desire to be a movie director. It was something he had planned for and he had made what started out as a you know some cute home movies to where he was making as a high school kid he was making legitimate short films so I wasn't really surprised when he was able to take hold and, and really direct the film as far as becoming hugely successful well I'd been in this business long enough to know that it's really really competitive it's really a tough business you know, the, the best scenario is he'd be able to make a decent living doing it. After Ron and I had written the script and Roger had approved it, we decided, okay, we need to seek out really great locations. Dad got it in his head, but what they really needed to do was some on-site reconnaissance of this. I mean, I could look on a map and tell him, there's nothing out there, Dad. But he wanted, he wanted to drive to recreate the road to Vegas for Grand Theft Auto and all these dirt roads and they had it all mapped out. Gene and I were riding in Clint's Pacer and uh, Ron and Cheryl were driving Ron's Volvo station wagon, I think. And so we're out there driving around on these desert roads or cow paths, sort of, and we got stuck. Ron was gonna try to pull Clint's pacer out with, with his Volvo, got his Volvo stuck. So here we are, stuck out here in the you know hot sun, hot summer sun, trying to, we didn't even have anything to dig, digging with our hands, trying to dig our cars out. That was not pleasant, and I wasn't getting paid. <laughs> I was just an actor gonna get a couple of thousand bucks to be in this movie, and all of a sudden he's got me, you know, wheeling my new car out across the desert. And finally some guy in a four-wheel drive vehicle saw us, came over, and towed us out. <laughs> we, we laughed about that for a long time. We were kind of commandos. We were rebel filmmakers. You know, we were out there on the desert. I remember uh, we had had this scene where we blew up the bridge. But now the bridge is over here burning. And John Davison, who was really just an on-hands producer, picks up a shovel and goes over and starts throwing sand on it to smother the fire. And of course, I'm associate producer. I see John doing that. I go over and pick up a shovel, and I start helping him. And uh, we put out the fire. Jesus, did you see that? We had so much fun choreographing the car chases. You have your, your little toy cars, mm -hmm. and you move them around like a checkerboard almost, so you know what you want to have happen. When we finished our last shot of Grand Theft Auto, it was just about dark, and uh, I was on the set with Ron, and we were gonna have a little wrap party right there where the camera was, and they, most of the cast were there and the crew. 
Ron called cut, print, and that's a wrap. And I was standing there beside him and we looked at each other and we hugged and then backed off from each other, looked each other in the eye and simultaneously said, we did it. <laughs> and that was, a, 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 for me, a great memorable moment and, uh, you know, a realization that, by gosh, he had directed his first movie, he brought it in on budget, on time, and uh, I thought from looking at dailies he had some great footage. Working on this picture wasn't hardly like work. I mean, and in fact, very rarely is making a movie with Ron like work. Not that he's like Mr. Fun Bubbles or anything like that. It's just that it's so second nature for me to be working with him that it's ridiculous that, that they pay me. But I'll, I'll take it. Gene Spiegel Howard, my late wife and I, we were actors. And then when our boys were born, I never really encouraged them to be actors. It's just, that's what mom and dad did. Growing up in the Howard family, I, I didn't know any different. I mean, be, being creative, being part of the entertainment business was just something that we all did, and, and it was second nature to me. I can't imagine not being a part of, you know, the, the film business or the television business. Even when, when both Ron and Clint were working, uh, starring in television series and that sort of thing, and making lots of money, you know, way out earning me, we still just saved their money and lived on what we could afford. You know, we lived in the house that I could pay for, the car I could pay for to drive, and that's the way we lived. He explained to us the difference about fame uh, and, and, and celebrity. We learned that at such an early age. This man has had a remarkable ability, and continues to, to teach. And it's not exactly, you know, the brilliant things he says, but it's the way he says them. And he always made such practical sense to us. They were never the breadwinners. They were the kids, and uh, they did what the old man said, and uh, put their money in the bank. But when Ron and I would act up, I saw Ron get him, and I know I got him, and it was the thumb, and it was Dad's quiet way of physically disciplining us. And he would take, you know, farmer's hands, man, he would take it, he'd bop us on the coconut, and it, we'd snap too. If I started acting like a little jerk, I'd quit acting like a little jerk real fast because I knew he meant business. Well, see, I would, I would just, when they were out of line, and they knew they were out of line, and I would just kind of quietly. And I was a little guy, like being a little you know, bit of a joker. Kind of, kind of subtly just walk up without making mm -hmm. any fanfare or anything and just go, Ow! Jeez, he still got it. <laughs> yeah, this and is show away. this is show business. You're supposed to do it in like like no. Ow. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. This yeah. interview's over. I, I should have pulled I should have I should have pulled the punch a little. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs>